welcome i'm covering now pituitary gland functions and the disorders so the pituitary disorders the normal pituitary extension of the hypothalamus anterior glandular portion and the posterior neural portion a very nice slide on our uh, jcu uh, web uh, web slide anterior portion and the posterior portion anterior is glandular develops from the rat case pouch the epithelium of the nasal cavity joins with the neural crest that is diencephalon together forms the pituitary gland okay now hyperview the anterior pituitary has all glands endocrine glands three types of cells the basophilic blue cells acidophilic red cells and the others clear cells are known as chromophobes they don't like any color okay posterior pituitary is just astrocytes and axons in between axons and just astrocytes um ultrastructurally these axons carry the neural transmitters the posterior uh, pituitary hormones which directly release into the capillaries okay so now the function control hypothalamus controls the pituitary although we think that the, all the hormones are controlled by interconnected feedback mechanisms but there is a strong neural control so uh, the hypothalamic nuclei the neural function which is controlled by emotions control our endocrine system okay so anterior pituitary through the nerves blood vessels releasing hormones and the pituitary hormones posterior pituitary direct release of hormones into the capillaries okay that is adh and oxytocin so just to summarize there that um, the systems of the chakras which are interrelated is represented by the inhibitory and positive controls okay and all of that is controlled through our emotions or the mind now basic pathology the common disorders the pituitary functions has six types of cells producing different hormones and the commonest disorder is an adenoma a benign tumor of prolactin producing lactotroph adenomas are also known as prolactinoma prolactin which causes milk secretion so usually it is associated with galactorrhea and amenorrhea in females sexual dysfunction and infertility in both males and females the second common is the somatotroph somatotroph is the growth hormone producing cell and it produces either zygantism in children or acromegaly when it occurs in adults mammosomotroph is the third common type cell which produces both growth hormone and prolactin so the features can be combined so only these are the commonest among them is the prolactinoma is the commonest so commonest cause of hyperpituitarism is an adenoma and in that the commonest one is a prolactinoma the least common is the gonadotroph adenoma gonadotrophism and that is just about 1% now the commonest cause of hypopituitarism destruction of pituitary is usually due to an injury trauma tumor or an infarction pituitary adenoma the prolactinoma is the commonest it is due to g protein mutations 95% cases are sporadic but only 5% are familial carcinomas are very rare prolactin is the commonest producing hormone and the least is gonadotrophins most commonly they are micro adenomas very small tumors and they may get calcified and they are the 90% cases they are usually less than 10 mm more common in females 10 is to 1 they produce hormone so they are more functional macro adenomas just about 10% but they are more common in males they are usually non functional that's why they come to the diagnosis at a later stage 
and the tumors would have grown very big okay so women will have more of hormone features that is amenorrhea galactorrhea infertility whereas men will have symptoms more due to tumor headache visual loss hypogonadism and infertility later okay so a macro adenoma a huge tumor is more common in males non functional whereas micro adenoma is more common in females microscopically they are uniform one type of cells remember normal pituitary is many types of cells the acidophils basophils and chromophores whereas adenomas have one type of cells depending on whichever cell is affected okay so just if you note that they are uniform one type of cells that is enough for microscopy the next common is a somatotroph adenoma or growth hormone producing adenoma adenomas rarely it can also produce both prolactin and growth hormones this is the second common tumors they produce either zygantism when it occurs at very young age where the bones start growing too much so the both the limb bones will be markedly increased disproportionately larger okay and this growth hormone induces hepatic insulin like growth factor also known as somatomedin c and which produces the clinical features so growth hormone produces clinical features of excess growth through somatomedin c they have long arms long legs and a big lower jaw very big lower jaw they also have diabetes congestive cardiac failure arthritis muscle weakness and osteoporosis so that's uh, examples of uh, market enlargement of hands and feet compared to normal now she hands syndrome is a postpartum anterior pituitary necrosis physiologically during pregnancy there is hypertrophy of the anterior pituitary and also note that there are no arteries in anterior pituitary actually it is the post capillary venules of hypothalamus which is bringing trophic hormones and they are the only blood supply so in case of pregnancy there is a physiologic hypertrophy with compromised blood supply ischemia and when they also have additional shock or bleeding or sepsis in pregnancy it undergoes total necrosis only the anterior pituitary necrosis and that is known as shehan syndrome although nowadays it's not very common it was it is very characteristic disease typical symptoms will be inability to breastfeed severe fatigue depression because of sudden loss of all anterior pituitary hormones lack of menstrual bleeding loss of pubic and axillary hair low blood pressure and gradually it all starts increasing okay treatment is replacement by all the hormones so that's the hemorrhage showing and post necrotic empty cavity of the anterior pituitary okay now hypopituitarism decreased pituitary function 75% of the anterior pituitary loss leads to hypopituitarism with or without posterior pituitary loss when it is combined anterior and posterior pituitary we usually suspect hypothalamic disorders usually tumors congenital acquired tumors injury necrosis condition known as empty cella syndrome craniopharyngioma just a name i am putting it here it's a tumor of epithelium from the rat case pouch the anterior pituitary embryologic structure or it can be due to a glioma we will cover in the later weeks the it's a cns tumor it can also occur within the hypothalamus or pituitary now all these things can destroy pituitary function and that leads to hypopituitarism now clinical features will be based on the hormone involved okay when it is complete anterior pituitary then all the hormones so growth hormone leads to pituitary dwarfism wherein the dwarfs are proportionately 
dwarf meaning all the hands limbs are all equally affected known as pituitary dwarfism fsh lh growth hormone infertility impotence hypothyroidism melanocyte stimulating factor is usually produced along with acth and that produces severe pallor loss of melanocyte function and acth leads to hypoadrenalism and post pituitary loss leads to diabetes insipidus when diabetes insipidus with any of these associated anterior pituitary then we suspect hypothalamic disorders okay now regarding dwarfism just wanted to put it the commonest is the achondroplasia then is the turner syndrome and the third is the pituitary dwarf all other dwarf uh, conditions are rare okay so achondroplasia it's not due to pituitary it is disproportionate meaning the central body is almost normal but only short limbs okay whereas pituitary dwarf they are symmetric so they do not have abnormality so they are proportional pituitary dwarfism okay so just a brief there posterior pituitary disorders the two major types siadh wherein there is excess adh and diabetes insipidus decreased adh now anti diuretic hormone so when there is excess anti diuretic hormone there is water retention water retention water intoxication body stores water low serum sodium and high urine osmolality so urine becomes too concentrated now both these conditions occur with cns injury trauma tumor sepsis acute respiratory distress syndrome and many drugs can also cause just for remembrance i remember it as super increased adh marked adh decreased urine whereas opposite is diabetes insipidus diabetes insipidus by name it is tasteless urine insipidus so unlike diabetes mellitus which is honey or sweet urine here it is tasteless urine so it is diuresis or polyuria due to decreased anti diuretic hormone so there is so much more filtration more polyuria dehydration the body loses water and high sodium serum sodium whereas low urine sodium so more urine is lost from the body so somehow i just remember it as laurel and hardy laurel the thin person is the feature of insipidus hardy the siadh okay just for remembering okay thank you